This is Ryan with GameRoomSolutions.com and I want to show you how um, I have my current jukebox running and, and something that you could easily do by just getting a touch screen whether it's an all-in-one Android device or, or running a Windows device with like a USB touch screen. Um, so what this is is old touch tunes box that I got off of Craigslist and then I just gutted it, made it to where it would fit a larger monitor, put a second monitor on the bottom and then added some arcade buttons as well. Uh, and some LEDs uh, that will actually change, continue to fade and change with the music that I just ran around through the diffusers there. So <clears throat> there's a lot of ways to run jukebox software. I, I've tried Zenpoint, I've tried uh, backdooring through XBMC, but Google Play recently did an update and music's a mess. Even if you're downloading it, you know, to stay up on all the different artists and titles and albums. Um, for me it's just too much. So with Google Play it's like 10 bucks a month and there's a lot of cool features that you can do. One is it's optimized really well for a touch screen. Um, and what this is right now is this is a Windows PC. I have some different neon signs that actually change every uh, three minutes. It'll change to a different neon sign. And it, this is just running Google, Google Chrome in a uh, kiosk mode. So I have it coded and I'll show how this is done to where if I hold down the red button it'll take it out of kiosk mode so you can see it's just your normal web browser. Hold it down again it'll go back and, and some of the cool features in here one you don't have to download or maintain everything everything streamed from the web so you could run this off like an 8 gigabyte SSD if you wanted to or a really small SSD. Um, so you can see on the left you'll have your Listen Now, My Library, Radio, and Explore. So My Library, that's not actually anything that's downloaded, that's just different artists that you've pulled in. To say you want to add them to your library. Um, so if I go in here, I don't know, I'll pick George Strait. So you pick the artist and what it's going to do is say things that you've added to your library, but more importantly it'll show his top songs. And that does this for all artists, so you can hit See All. And these are the top songs here, so any of these just go ahead and click one. And then if you want it to keep running, it'll just keep running all George Strait songs. You can just, oops, you can just uh, push the picture in the bottom. And this is what you'll get. So if you're having a party or something, it'll just run. And if you create a pay playlist, or if you're just running like a top songs from 80s rock, it would continue to do that. Uh, I also here have my volume up and volume down. So you can see there. And I'll show how I have that done. Uh, play and pause when I push that button. Just keep it going. Um, I also now want to go back. I just coded this red button. If I just push it, it'll go back for me. Uh, the other great feature that they added in this, oh, here's all of his albums, just to show that. And again, I don't have to do any maintenance on this other than give them 10 bucks a month. Then it'll also show them related artists that I could push. But a new feature that they have is where they added videos. And in a majority of artists, all of their videos are there. So if I hit one of these videos, it'll automatically pull up the video. And all you have to do is double touch in the same spot and it'll full screen and it will do uh, the full 1080p videos if it's available. This is an older video so it might just be 720. And again your volume will work. So if I go back here, uh, all I have to do if I touch it, it'll pause. Again I can use a button if I want to. Touch it twice, it'll go back to a smaller screen. Then if I just touch off, the video goes away. And it'll continue to play whatever audio song that you had playing before you did the video. So it's pretty seamless that way. So just to show this too, on the I can press the Explorer here. And it'll pull up kind of current things that are going on. But the cool thing is I can hit genres and go down. So I could hit, for instance, rock. And it'll pull up the top uh, featured playlist guys have, top current rock albums or top rock albums top rock songs as well. I can hit the subgenre if I want to and say well I just want 90s rock or I want you know 70s rock, 80s rock, whatever. And again pull up top albums, everything from that. Uh, so you can see here like I have Guns N' Roses or, or uh, Journeys, the top ones, but you can actually push the artist 
and it'll go directly to the artist instead of playing that song if you want to. And again, uh, you can people can pick the videos. They can queue up songs. Um, double touch. Yeah, so you can tell once you build something like this. And again, you just need a touch screen. So you can do a large, large Android tablet because it'll have the Google Music built in. Um, and then just run like a sound bar to it or run it to your current surround sound. Or do some kind of all-in-one that runs Android or Windows. Android would be a little cheaper. Windows would be a little more powerful if you want to do some different things besides just this. Um, so that's that. Again, that's a low maintenance, like 10 bucks a month. And, and that thing will continue to update. Now, I want to go ahead and show how this is set up a little bit more on the nuts and bolts and just the outside. Obviously, this is what people see. You can see how that changed down at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> so this thing's a mess on the inside of the cabinet. But I don't really care. So you can tell I'm just running a receiver. A, a couple bookshelf speakers. The subwoofers are under there, back there. And then just a PC. So the PC actually runs um, USB for the touchscreen, and then the monitor. Then I'm running one of our USB encoders that we sell at GameRoomSolutions.com and our buttons. So you can see I have my harness here that it actually powers the light from the PC into here. And then I have the four buttons hooked up to this board that's running USB back into the PC. Besides that, I also have a, a music controller here. So when I take the, uh, I just put the remote in here so I have the remote. So I can tell it just to do a color. So if I wanna hit blue, you saw the LEDs just went blue, but just to show you, now it'll just stay blue. This one also listens to the music, so if I push this music button down here at the bottom, that's where it'll start doing fade with the music as it uh, turns up. So that's it. You need a PC, a touchscreen. You can run a couple buttons using a, a USB and then run it to some kind of audio receiver. Uh, this is an older receiver. It actually has A and B channels, so the nice thing is there's a B channel wired to my back deck. So I can just come in here and push the B channel anything anybody plays on the touch on the uh, touch tunes or the jukebox will actually play out back. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to show again is how I set these buttons up. So F11 will put you in kiosk mode in Chrome. So if you need to go to kiosk, you just press F11. So that's the same thing that happens if I hold this button down. So it'll go out. I'll go ahead and minimize this. And just to show a couple things. So you'll see here that under my control panel, I have the Zen mode controller. That's just that USB board that I showed you hook these four buttons up. And then what you can do besides that, there's a free program called Joy to Key. And what this does is it converts these buttons. So you can see I have button one, two, three, four doing different things. And that's, and that's how I have it here is button one, two, three, and four. So what this means is if I go into button one, if I just press it, it's going to do a backspace stroke on the keyboard. So that'll go back. If I hold it down for longer than half a second, it'll do F11. Button two will do the space bar, which is play and pause. Button three, that's what the uh, that's the code for the increase volume. Button four is the decrease volume. F would be for full screen and E would be for escape. So just to go in and show you how one of these would work, <clears throat> you can come in and configure one button here. So it's waiting on me to do a button press. But what I did is on keyboard two, I press that first one, push backspace, it comes in there. I press the second one right there and I hit F11. And then I change that to say switch depending on how long the button is pressed. And it's just a five, you know, half a second or whatever. And then what you'll do is, uh, let me see if I can find this. Preferences. Uh, there's a setting in here. Maybe it's just under options. But there's a setting in here that just essentially says boot with Windows. So you boot it with Windows, it'll automatically minimize itself as well, so you won't even know it's there. And essentially all it does is anytime I press one of these buttons, in fact here I'll press button two right now, you can see there, it's just taking button two and converting it to a space bar, just like you're pressing the keyboard. So um, again, I can just pull up my Google Chrome, hit F11, I'm right in kiosk mode so no one can mess with my PC, you can see there it says to exit, and uh, you're good to go. So. Again, um, I think this box like this, you could literally just, uh, I, I would mount a sound bar on a wall and a touch screen, maybe like an all-in-one Android, run the Google Music app. So for 10 bucks a month, sound bar, wireless subwoofer, you could just put it right there in your living room or somewhere, um, mount it on a wall and you'd be all set. 
So again, we sell the buttons in the arcade controllers at our, uh, our website. There'll also be a blog done on this to explain all these steps. Uh, so visit GameRoomSolutions.com. Thanks.